How's it going, everybody? Andrew Zarian here, Wrestling Observer Live. We're here every single day, Monday through Friday, 3 p.m. Eastern, Saturdays with Jim Valley, and Sunday, 6 p.m. Eastern, with me. Listen, we got a big day here. I got some news, too. I, I have not been having a good week. A <laughs> good couple of weeks here, but I got to talk about that uh, after the break. But, man, we got a big day. Forbidden Door pay-per-view tonight in, what, an hour, two hours? By the time the show's over, it's time to start the show. Uh, this is a big moment for a lot of people. Uh, it's It's kind of veered into a direction that a lot of people didn't expect with all these injuries. New Japan versus AEW tonight on pay-per-view, obviously uh, going to be the big story here and everything that's going to happen leading up to this and, and exiting. Because this is not the card that a lot of people thought they would get, but listen, on paper, it's a fantastic card. Big sold-out stadium, right? Uh, arena. Maybe sold out. We'll find out, right? We'll see. There's a lot of secondhand market tickets still available. I think it was, as of yesterday, it was like 1,200 tickets. We're going to talk about that, obviously. A lot more injuries uh, AEW injuries, WWE injuries, a lot of injuries. And we're going to talk about why that's happening. Dave has a great theory on this. Dave and Garrett did a great job on Wrestling Observer Radio where they broke this down and kind of went into it and explained what's going on. We also had SmackDown and the built of money in the bank. Is this a pay-per-view you want to watch? I think a lot of people assumed this was going to be the great moment that, that people expected for Cody. And... We're not getting that, obviously, right? So who 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 deserves that spot to be the guy? A lot of a lot of stuff to go into, and also some news about Stephanie McMahon and how she ended up becoming interim CEO. Guys, we're going to a quick break. We'll be right back after this. Wrestling Observer live with me, Andrew Zarian, Sports Byline USA. Wrestling Observer live, Andrew Zarian here. Big day, obviously. Forbidden Door pay per view. First time New Japan versus AEW is happening. A lot of people anticipated this to happen a long time ago. Is it better that it didn't happen when people kind of wanted it to happen when they first started? Or is it better now? I think it, I, overall, if we're talking about, you know, what was a better decision, I think it was better to hold it off, right? AEW needed to get them themselves established in the world of pro wrestling. I don't think they, they should have piggybacked on the success of New Japan or anybody else when they were starting out, but... Uh, we're here now, and this would have been a very different card if the injuries had not happened. Uh, Dynamite did a okay job at trying to build this as much as they could. Obviously, you know, AW's had some um, some issues here the last couple of weeks with their TV. You know, some are saying they're doing a little bit too much. Some are saying that they they haven't adjusted and pivoted quickly enough. I don't know if those are fair criticisms you know when you have a guy like brian danielson that obviously gets hurt and can't compete and your champion gets hurt and you have another guy that's in a contract dispute that you're turning into an angle and everything else that's going on it it, it becomes pretty difficult and fortunately for them they have enough stars but you know maybe it's time to elevate some of these guys in the middle to a higher higher positioning we're going to talk about this let's go into dynamite a little bit here uh, I'm not going to do a full recap, but the things that matter for this pay-per-view. So Danielson came out. Brian Danielson comes out to address the Forbidden Door uh, match card and, of course, blood and guts that are happening on Wednesday. You know, this is this is the problem when you do too much. You kind of forget about some stuff. Blood and guts should be a bigger deal right now, right? But it's not, obviously. So he, he said that he's handpicking his replacement. And I'd love to know what the chat room thinks about this. Who would be a positive replacement for Brian Danielson? Not just anybody. I think a lot of people thought it would be Wheeler Yuta for a little bit, for the blood and gut. Uh, there were like so many suggestions to replace him in this in this uh, for Forbidden Door. It has to be big. It can't be Yuta. He hinted that it's a technical wrestler that he trusts. Obviously, a lot of people are thinking it's Claudio, right? Formerly known as Cesaro. A lot of people are thinking it's Johnny Gargano. Would you say Johnny Gargano would be a good replacement? You know what? We have our producer, Matt, here with me. He's a little shy, guys. MG's yes, a little shy here. There he is. I don't know if you guys could hear him or not, but I could hear him. Um, who who do you think would be better, uh, Gargano or Claudio? Oh, Claudio. I there think Claudio is, I think, is the one. 
<laughs> yeah, I, I, I would hope it's Claudia. You know what somebody wrote to me? And I don't know if this is... See, I got excited. I dropped my pen. If you guys are watching this. If you're not, then you have well, no idea what happened. And I'm, and I'm totally, here. totally uh, sidetracking you. Let, let me just say this because I want to get your opinion on this, right? There's mm. another person that a lot of people have speculated online. And I'm not saying it's him. I don't think it's him. But a lot of people are like, how about Regal? He's a technical wrestler that he trusts. He could also get down and get bloody and cheat and fight. You know, let me ask you this, Matt, and I want to get your opinion on this, obviously. Um, sure. Danielson in that promo, and, and correct me if, I, if I'm, I've been dealing with a lot. I don't know if you guys know, I fractured my hip. We'll talk about it when we come back from break in the next segment. <laughs> but I have a fractured hip right now. Uh, it's not as terrible as it sounds. Is the replacement, did, did, did Danielson say that his replacement not only is a great technical wrestler, but also could get down with the blood and gut style match? That's what he alluded to, right? Yes. Okay. I don't think Claudio, when I hear that, I immediately think Johnny Gargano, and I'll tell you why. He's, he's a really, he's a fantastic wrestler. Obviously, we know that. But he's also a guy that's really specialized in that NXT War Games style match. I was going to say, that's exactly where I was going. And mm -hmm. those, those matches that he had with, with Cole, the matches that he had with uh, Tommaso Ciampa, you know, those were, I mean, you could say blood and gut style, aggressive, you know, street fights, brawls. Okay, now you tell me what you think. Uh, I actually, that's where I was going with it is I think Johnny, a guy like Johnny Gargano has that experience in that type of a match. If that's where they're going with it, someone in that can do that. The technical, he is a good technical wrestler. Very good technical wrestler. Didn't, yeah. I just think if you, you think of a guy that can do it all, that's so well-rounded, it is Johnny Gargano. Or yeah. not Johnny, I'm sorry, Cesaro. Or Cesaro. No, Bobby. absolutely. Listen, if, right. if it was, mm -hmm. if we were just talking about this match. Uh, th this one match with Zack Sabre Jr., I would say Claudio would be a fantastic pick. But now when you kind of alluded that, like, this guy's going to do both, and he could do both, right? I'm thinking, I'm mm. like, oh, Johnny Gargano would be the best one for this. Now, I don't know if that's what you want to see. I don't know what's going to be a better match if Claudio versus Zack Sabre Jr. would be the match, but this is the situation we're in right now. Danielson not cleared yet. A lot of the anticipation was that he would be cleared. He's not, and uh, we're going from there. After this, we also got, and I'm just, I'm running through this quick because a lot of this connects to the pay-per-view, which I want to summarize for everybody. Uh, Orange Cassidy and Rapungi Vice defeated Will Ospreay and Aussie Open. Not a fan of this. I don't like that Will Ospreay is losing on TV. This is the second loss he's had in his, in his team matches. Uh, this is the one match that I am not super high on. We'll talk about this when we're driving down the card, obviously. Uh, FTR comes out to a huge pop. This was the big moment. Christian, right? I would love to see Christian play a part in this. He tries to explain why he attacked Jungle Boy. The crowd is chanting some very bad words that we can't say on radio. Uh, there was the, the camera pans to a 10-year-old chanting this thing. The line of the night was, you may want a father figure, but your father's dead. Major heat on Christian. Ends up, Luchasaurus comes out to attack him or confront him, and he ends up convincing Luchasaurus to kind of side with him at this very moment. So we'll see what happens here. AW All-Atlantic Championship qualifier. Malachi Black defeated Penta. Pac came out at the end. Miro shows up on the screen and cuts a insane Miro promo. Probably, actually, to be honest, it was the most coherent of the Miro promos, which I'm loving this insanity. Hangman Page defeats Silas Young. I enjoyed this, man. It was great to see Silas Young on AEW TV. Hangman looked good. Adam Cole was on commentary. After the match, Jay White comes out, confronts both Cole and Page, essentially says, hey, listen, Adam Cole, but they're two Adams, right? Adam Cole, I'm not going to face you. Goes in the ring, looks at Adam Page, and pretty much tells him I'm not going to face you either. And then the coin drop happens. Okada comes out. Rich lost his mind. We were talking about this with my co-host on Matt Men, Rich. He lost his absolute mind when Okada came out. <laughs> and in and, and typical AEW fashion, you debut with a white t-shirt. All these guys with their white t-shirts showing up on TV. Uh, very cool to see Okada here. Now he's playing a part. Now this is a, a fantastic match. Adam Cole, Adam Page, Jay White, and Okada for the IWGP World Championship.
Very cool. Tony Storm defeated Marina Shafir. Thunder Rosa made the save. Uh, I'm looking forward to this match also. And the main event, John Moxley and Tanahashi defeated Chris Jericho and Lance Archer. You know, I got we got a couple minutes here, but I, I wanna I wanna kind of touch on this. Um it was cool to see this match happen on TV, right? I think we all agree. But it was also something was very odd to seeing Tanahashi in this match. I, I don't know if it was that I was just so, you know, listen, he, he, this guy is a legend. He's a fantastic wrestler. I mean, we could go on and on. But, like, seeing him in that AEW match in a tag match in that main event, it was cool, man. It was different. It was cool. I very much liked it. Uh, we also got Rampage that happened Friday night. Andrade defeated Ray Phoenix. 16 minutes and 29 seconds aired. I don't have the exact time of this match. Do you have the time, Matt? It went longer than that, right? Uh, that's yeah. That's from the Observer. Um, that's what they. That was what was on TV. Yeah, so I'm not sure exactly. Yeah, 16 minutes 29 seconds aired. ROH Women's Championship. Uh, Mercedes Martinez, uh, and Serena Deeb defeated Soraya and uh, Luck Sierra. Yes. Uh, Sierra oh, Sierra. I'm sorry. Watch. Sierra. And, uh, yeah, there you go. Uh, I, I'm having trouble reading this. Hook defeated uh, D, uh, the DKC and Jeff Cobb defeated Cash Wheeler. So this is and this is what we're going into this, right? We're going into this now. This is going to be an interesting show. Listen, guys, when we come back from our break, we're going to go head first into Forbidden Door. This is going to be an awesome show, man. Well, and But I also want to find out, what's going to make it not so awesome? What did you expect? There's a lot up in the air here. Wrestling Observer Live, Andrew Zarian. Stay tuned. We'll be right back after this. Wrestling Observer Live, Andrew Zarian here. Pay-per-view night here for all of us. AEW Forbidden Door. AEW New Japan present Forbidden Door. Some more last-minute changes as of yesterday. I'm looking at my notes here. More injuries happening. By the way, these are the injuries that AEW is dealing with, right? By the way, uh, Takahashi, Hiromu Takahashi is off this car due to a fever. He can't travel from Mexico. The eight-man tag Japan. is now a trios match from Japan. He can't travel from Japan. Eight-man tag is now a trios match. The match will now be Sting, Allen, and Takagi versus the Bucks. ELP with Hikaleo in their corner. Okay, I'll take that. I don't dislike it. I would have loved to see Hiromu on this card, but unfortunately he's out. But look at these injuries here. Ishii, Kyle O'Reilly, CM Punk, Brian Danielson, Buddy Matthews is dealing with something. Jungle Boy, shoulder injury. MJF off the card. Uh, Kenny Omega, obviously, the big one here. What a shame this man is not on this card. He is the one that put this whole thing together. It would not have been possible without Kenny Omega. And in the most bizarre, predictable wrestling way, he is not on this card. I, I keep saying this is such... I mean, it kind of feels like what happened with ECW One Night Stand with Rob Van Dam. He couldn't compete on the show. He really uh, catapulted to happening. But it is what it is. Obviously, hopefully with the success of this show. I can't see it not being a success. We'll see another one happen. And maybe that'll be the one we get these matches. Find This is the final Forbidden Door card. The buy-in. We got Keith Lee and Swerve versus Con uh, Kanemura and El Desperado. I'm glad to see that Keith Lee and Swerve are on the same page here. Buy-in. Yoshihashi. Or all, all of our favorite, Yoshihashi. And Goto versus Aaron Solo and QT Marshall. The buy-in also has Max Caster and the Gun Club, Billy, Austin, and Colton versus the LA Dojo. Okay, I'm cool with this. Let's see. Uh, I, this should be a fun match. It's like a young boys match. I'm into this. All right. Can't complain. Then we got the Bullet Club. The Young Bucks back in the Bullet Club. One night only, I guess. The Young Bucks, El Fantasmo, and Hikaleo uh, versus the Dudes with Attitudes. Remember, this is the one That's with the change the, match. This yeah. is the change match. Yeah. Uh, Matt, yeah. our producer here. Uh, Hiromu Takahashi is out of this match. Unfortunately, 
We're going to get Zack Sabre Jr. versus TBA, Turnbuckle Al. You know what? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do my pick here, okay? I'm going to go with my pick here. I'm going to go with Johnny Gargano in this match. Matt, you want to go with yours? Okay. Who's your pick? I'll say Claudio. So okay. I, I will. I can. Can we just veer for just a second? What yeah. if it's someone we're not thinking of? What if it is a complete swerve and it's someone like a uh, Wyndham Rotunda or something like that? Uh, is Wyndham a great technical wrestler? <laughs> no, but I'm saying it would be a complete swerve and out outside the box thinking. But I, I mean, I think we should weigh that a little bit that there could be someone else there could be a swerve no they could absolutely be a swerve and you know like this is the thing right and you kind of hit the nail on head like everybody watching this and everybody reading about this like we we all will put in who we think should be in it right and sometimes a lot of the times it's absolutely correct we hit the nail on the head and we're we're 100 right with this and it's the right guy in the right position for the right replacement other times you know it's a disappointment and other times it's a total surprise that works out I don't know how much of a surprise. I mean, there's three people in my mind that this could be. Uh, I, I, and I highly doubt it's Regal, but it's either Claudio or, or Johnny, and I'm, and I'm fine with both of them. Do you think that crowd poo-poos on if it's Johnny or Claudio, if it's not the one that they expect, or do you think they'll just be happy to see them? I think they'll be happy to see whoever it is, especially yeah. one of those guys I haven't seen in a while. And it's the old, you know, when you come from WWE, can I, it just makes them, I think, coming from a WWE, I think they're happy to see them out of it. Yeah, that, yeah. That, no, that I agree with you. crowd especially. I think for Claudio especially, right? Because he's a guy that, you know, most of these people have never seen the full potential of. I mean, we have. We've seen him mm-hmm. compete other places. But this guy was a WWE long-term guy and... He was very well-liked for someone that was so underutilized. Always very well-liked uh, by casual fans. fans. Casual fans <laughs> and, and the hardcore fans, I would say. Mm-hmm. It's not just one one side. So I'm going to give you my predictions here, right? Keith Lee, Swerve Scott, I'm going to go with Keith Lee. Uh, Yoshihashi and Goto versus Aaron Solo and QT Marshall. Obviously, I'm going to go with Goto and Yoshi, Yoshihashi. Uh, Gun Club and Max Caster. I'm going to go with the dojo on this one. I think you could do some sort of funny finish here with the guns kind of uh, getting confused. Bullet Club versus Dudes with Attitudes. Who should take this? Um, I think I, I I feel like you know what I I it was Brian said this on the radio show I think um, and I, I kind of agree with him. Sting and Darby I think are in line for a tag title run, and I think one of them pinning one of the Bucks makes sense. Okay, that that's out. cool. I'm into that, mm-hmm. and and yeah. with uh, so and with Singing Jungle Darby Boy injured, Shingo. yeah, Jungle mm-hmm. Boy's involved yep. in his own thing. So okay, that's cool. Uh, Zack Saber mm-hmm. Jr. versus TBA. I'm gonna pass this, but this does say something. You know, if it's a guy that's not really signed and they're just bringing in for the show, does Zack Saber Jr. go over? And if he, and if they are not, you know, if they are signed, should I don't think you know? Here's the thing, right? Nobody should lose in this match. I don't know. I don't. I don't want to see Zack Saber Jr. lose, but. He might be the half. He might have to be the one. If we're getting a Johnny Gargano, or you know, that leads into a big story for AEW, or or Cesaro, that leads into a big story. We'll see what happens here. Well, Chris one Jer- thing, uh, yeah. yeah, I said ahead. one thing we should we should uh, consider is: Are these guys going to be able to cross back over and come over and continue stories? Because if yeah. that's the case, then some of these guys winning makes sense. If you know, and then we get something. In six months or even next year, they can yeah. do this. And, and no, I think I think if they over. win, I think some of mm-hmm. them have to win to, and bring the story currently, not six months from now. You know, in in current times. Yeah, yeah. It just it, it depends. Yeah. Cool. Uh, Chris Jericho, Minoru Suzuki, and Sammy Guevara versus Eddie Kingston, Wheeler Yuta, and Shota Umino. Interesting thing here. Uh, so I didn't put this in the. I wanted to. I wanted to. I didn't. I forgot to add this for you. But okay. um, this. This match is the winner of this um, determines the uh, the blood and guts uh, who gets the um, advantage at blood and, uh, yeah. blood and guts Wednesday. Yeah, so, so generally you want the heels this. with the advantage, right? So mm-hmm. right. I don't I don't know if this will this will be a thing. I I do want to see Minoru Suzuki. This is going to be a Shereko. wacky match. Yeah, it has this to be a wacky be match. Mm, yeah, yeah. I, I definitely want to see Minoru Suzuki go crazy in this. Maybe maybe some sort of you know back and forth with Jericho. Maybe they fall apart. 
as a team. You can, now you could do that match in a couple weeks with Minara. I mean, there's a lot of options here. I think that's pretty Remember, cool. Remember, you got, and you're also going to have some ringside people. You got Tay Conti's probably getting involved in this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All yeah, kinds yeah. of messages. Yeah, this will be, yeah. mm -hmm. be a nutty one. So this is my least look forward to match coming up. IWGP US <laughs> Championship. Will Ospreay and Orange Cassidy. And it's not a knock at Orange Cassidy at all, right? I, I, I No knock at him. He, is he my style of wrestling? No, he's not, but I totally get it. It works. It's fine. Um, I thought maybe you'd want to do something a little bit bigger here, right? I think this is a fantastic TV match you could have on the main event of a Dynamite. Uh, should Will Ospreay's first real serious singles opponent on a pay-per-view be Orange Cassidy? I guess if it helps further the storyline, right? You don't. This is a political match. Orange could take the pin. Will Ospreay could win. Uh, leading to something else. So this, or this could be a sleeper. I think a lot of people think, think this could be a sleeper match. You know, this could be a fantastic. That's where I'm at with this. Yeah. So Matt's mm. Matt's part of that too. IWGP Heavyweight Tag Team Championship. We got ROH World Champions, World Tag Team Champions. I'm sorry. Let me let me start this over. IWGP Heavyweight Tag Team Champions slash Ring of Honor Tag Team Champions United Empire versus. FTR versus Rapungi Vice. So this is a big match. So we'll see what happens here. So we got two champions facing off against Beretta and uh, and 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 Rocky. You know, I I don't think. I mean, Rocky and Beretta could take the pin and it'll be fine, right? That's how they should do this. I would imagine that's how yeah. they should do it. Yeah, but yeah. I want you to think of something. Mm. Rapungi Vice is the one team that is going back and forth between AEW and New Japan. So oh, so maybe they that. could they could take something and, and they could actually and, yeah, take they it. can they and, can and, actually. And, <laughs> Listen, and, and, we're friends of Rockies. I, I, I want to see yeah, Rocky and, win. I, I think that's interesting. Well, uh, yeah, but but the I think every I think a lot of people just want FTR to take this. They're yeah, the, I think the so best too. Best team right now. I think so they're, too. They're like MVPs of the year so yeah. far for me. We also got an AEW Women's World Championship match. Thunder Rosa versus Tony Storm. A lot of criticism of Thunder Rosa's reign as champion. Maybe we can go into that with the questions in the next segment when we have them. Uh, because there's a lot of question as to what's going on here. Why it's not what it should feel like for, and for a lot of people. Uh, I'm going to go with Thunder Rosa on this. AEW All-Atlantic Championship. This is a four-way. Malachi Black, Pac, Miro, and Clark Connors as a replacement here. Uh, I'm going to go with Miro. I want Miro to win this title. Let's go into IWGP World Heavyweight Championship match. This is a big match. Jay White, the champion, current champion versus Okada, Hangman Page, and Adam Cole. They've done a good job at protecting everybody here. I think Cole could take the pin. It won't be a big problem. Uh, Jay White, obviously, and Okada are going to continue this. And uh, we we have this match. Uh, this could be a fantastic, fantastic match. By the way, Okada's huge. A giant man. And the main event, Interim AEW World Championship, John Moxley versus Hiroshi Tanahashi. Hiroshi Tanahashi and uh, John Moxley in the main event here. I think you should put the title on Tanahashi. I want to see this bonkers thing. You don't want to see Tanahashi with the title? Quick, yes or no? Uh, I, yes, I would like to see okay. it, but I also consider the G1. Uh, you also consider the G1. Yeah, I mean, there's yeah. a lot that they could do here. Uh, John Moxley could win this. Tanahashi could do this. I think Tana, I think Moxley and CM Punk together would be a great story for that Chicago show coming up in September. But listen, we're going to go to a quick break. We'll be right back after this. Wrestling Observer Live. Stay tuned. Wrestling Observer Live, Andrew Zarian here, Sunday edition solo, but I got two producers here. I got Matt and I got John here. Uh, Matt's been helping out a little bit. I want it, you know, he, he's, he's the guy that writes all the notes here for us. All my, all my shows, all my notes. Matt does everything, so let's all thank him. Uh, I said I'd talk about this, and then I want to go into some of the news and everything else. I, I fractured my hip. Uh, I think a lot of you guys saw my tweet <laughs> during the week. I had a uh, I had a slip and fall, like I'm 90. It's like one of those commercials. I need that button. I fall and I can't get up. <laughs> in the middle of the night, my daughter came into my room with like a glass of water filled to the brim. Apparently, uh, I, I have no idea that if, it seems like the entire 
cup of water was on my floor. Miraculously. I have no idea how that happened. I got up in the middle of the night. I went to open a door, and guess what? I took a bad bump on my side. Fell right on my butt. A couple days go by. I'm like, yeah, this is a little sore. A week goes by. Two weeks go by. My leg is really killing me. I can barely move my left leg. I can walk straight, but not not long. Like, I can walk a little bit. And uh, I went and got an x-ray. I got an MRI, and I have a slight tear. I have a labrum tear. Very little. Nothing crazy. Uh, they discovered I have tons of arthritis in my hip. And I, f- I, have a, I have a small fracture in my hip. So now we're going to find out what I'm doing. I may get surgery. I may not. I don't know. So this is what I'm dealing with right now. So if, you, if you're questioning, where's Andrew been? He's a little quiet online. This is why. But you can follow me on Twitter, at Andrew Zarian. All right, let's go into some of this news here. You know, we, well, I rushed through this to, to hit the spots before the break. But I do want to touch on this this. John Moxley Tanahashi match. You know, sometimes you want to do something a little different. I, you know, John Moxley was this was never supposed to be the match, and I think we could have all predicted that it was going to be CM Punk that wins the title, or or maintain keeps the title, leaving the show. We may get a better match here with John Moxley and Tanahashi. In all honesty, but you know, Moxley wins; he's the champion. Now you're going into All Out. He's the interim champion. You have that title versus title, right? Interim champion versus legitimate champion or whatever you want to call it. That building goes insane. Uh, it's a match that they'll eat up. You could, you know, Dave brought it up with Garrett on Observer Radio. You could. This ties into the Shield situation. Uh, this ties into a lot of stuff when CM Punk was leaving the company. You know, uh, you could you could do something where it says, you know, you left and you didn't want to face me and blah, blah, blah. You know, you, because essentially the shield took over after CM Punk left. The landscape changed in that company. Three guys they, they, they got and all three were big, big stars. So I think this kind of plays hand in hand here with Moxley and Tanahashi. Listen, man, Moxley's fantastic. Tanahashi's fantastic. How could you how could you, you know, be disappointed with this? I don't think anybody is. Uh, it's one person that's probably disappointed is Kenny Omega. He did an interview with Sean Ross Sapp, friend of the shows, friend of mine. Uh, he wanted to be in Chicago for this. Uh, he spoke about his New Japan career. He spoke about his injuries and what was like a pivotal moment that he knew he had to get everything fixed. You know, this guy went for years from 26. To, I mean, obviously, this guy was having these style matches for the majority of his career, but... 2016 on his career i mean became uh he became the top guy as far as the athletics go as far as in ring goes he became that 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 guy that it was most desirable to the point that wwe offered him tons and tons to go there obviously he chose AEW and he kickstarted that and he he had a great championship run i'm I, i i'm very hopeful that he comes back and there's this nice little boom happening because if you're watching AEW TV, uh, the rating is a little low. They're, they're, they're feeling it a little bit right now with everybody being hurt and being out. I mean, maybe this speaks volume about CM Punk and how valuable he is for AEW. You know, between CM Punk, uh, Kenny Omega, uh, Brian Danielson, you know, these three are big names for this company. Obviously, everybody else that's there, also Moxley, everybody else. But this is a... Um, it's a very interesting time for both companies. Uh, I think the the eyeballs and the pressure is going to be on AEW going into the third and you know the fourth quarter essentially, uh, when they really need to have hot TV post summer because they're renegotiating uh, their contract, you know, for for the, they get picked up and get some more money. So we'll see what happens there. Let's go into the Stephanie McMahon stuff. I want to touch on this very quickly. Uh, I'm not going to go deep into the rest of SmackDown or what's going on. Uh, Money in the Bank pay-per-view next week, right? Yeah, next week, Money in the Bank pay-per-view. So Saturday. Saturday. It's a Saturday pay-per-view. Mm. Keep forgetting that. But, you know, the, a story came out. Dave reported in the newsletter this week. A lot of people assume that this interim WWE CEO appointment for Steph came from Nick Khan or it came from Vince. And that does not seem to be the case here. In the newsletter, 
Head on over to F4WOnline.com and check out the newsletter. The decision to appoint Stephanie McMahon as interim WWE CEO and chairwoman was made by a special committee of the company's board that didn't include members of her family or Nick Khan. The eight other members made the decision. Now, obviously, I, I think in a position like this, Vince would most likely want his daughter there. But a couple of weeks prior, myself, other people that cover pro wrestling, uh, Dave reported it, they, uh, Brian reported it. Stephanie McMahon was getting buried by key people within the company. So this is a, a, a very bizarre turn of events. It's pro wrestling. Are you surprised? You know? But the the idea that it was Vince that decided this and not uh, other people, that is not true. It was not Vince. It was other people. Eight other members. So as the investigation is heating up here, uh, we'll have more information this coming week, obviously, when it happens. Uh, SmackDown, they did a couple things to lead into Money in the Bank. Sami Zayn defeated uh, Nakamura, New Day versus Jinder, and Shanky. The match never happened when Shanky decided to dance with the New Day. What a ridiculous thing. They repackaged the Viking Raiders. They returned, attacked everybody. Raquel Gonzalez and Lacey Evans defeated Sonya Deville with Shayna Baszler and uh, Zia Lee. Uh, Natty. Oh, so here we go. Uh, Matt's favorite segment here. <laughs> Natty came out looking like Ronda Rousey. She was dressed like her, came out, came out with a baby stroller. I was convinced we were getting a Schnitzky moment. Was anybody else thinking this or was it me? Matt, were you thinking this? Uh, for a second, I really thought they were going there, and then they they turned. It just and they it turned it around. Non, it, <laughs> it was a non segment. It was silly. It was absolutely silly. It was silly. It was, we got we got a money in the bank qualifier. Shotzi defeated Tamina. Uh, Pat McAfee challenged Happy Corbin for a match of SummerSlam. You know what? I'm not against this. I love seeing Pat McAfee wrestle. I think this story makes sense. Two football guys. They could build that in. Uh, whatever. Yeah, Corbin is, this guy has stood the test of time in this company. Between gimmick changes, hot and cold, he's still here and he's in a big match with Pat McAfee. That's always an attraction match. Drew McIntyre and Sheamus defeated the undisputed tag team champions, the Usos, in 11 minutes. By winning, Drew and Sheamus have requalified for Money in the Bank here. So here's what we have for Money in the Bank. Next Saturday. Do we know what the ticket sales are for this one? Mm. I got to check out what Russell Tix is saying. Because this, you know, the story here, for people who don't remember, they had booked a giant venue and decided to pull it and go into a smaller venue here because they couldn't fill more seats. So, But the problem was they had sold mo more seats than available in the new venue. So they had to start over. We'll see what happens here. Men's Money in the Bank ladder match. Seth Rollins, Drew McIntyre, Sheamus, Omos, Sami Zayn versus TBD, TBD, and TBD. All right. I, I can't even predict who could win this. Maybe Drew, maybe Seth. We'll find out. Women's Money in the Bank ladder match. Alexa Bliss, Asuka, Lacey Evans, Liv Morgan, Raquel Rodriguez, Shotzi, and To Be Determined. Raw Women's Championship. Bianca Belair versus Carmella. Smack uh, Carmella just came back. How was she in a number one position again? SmackDown Women's Championship. Plug Ronda Rousey play. versus Natty. <laughs> what is that? I said that's a plug and play. They, plug that and play. was yeah. who they had plug available. And and that's it. They just, it's silly. Ronda Rousey mm -hmm. and Natalia. We got undisputed WWE Tag Team Champions. The Usos facing off against the Street Profits. United States championship match theory versus bobby lashley so we do not have a world title match on this um these are the matches we're getting ready for john cena obviously it might be uh it looks like it's gonna be theory and cena at SummerSlam for their match i mean okay all right not terrible uh they had so much momentum with cody kind of slowed down here oh we also got brock lesnar back <laughs> That's the other thing. We're back to Brock Lesnar for SummerSlam. 
The return, the revenge of Brock Lesnar and, and Roman Reigns. When all else fails, what do we do? Plug and play, right? Why worry about creating a new star? Why not have somebody... Brock, Brock Roman 49. Brock Roman 49. <laughs> Why would you spend time and put someone in a position, right? And listen, I'm not saying I, I, I could book this better, right? But you know what I would do? This is what I would do. Elevate somebody, right? Elevate them and don't look, make them look like fools. If you gave me a compelling reason why Matt Riddle should get a rematch against Roman Reigns at SummerSlam, and you, you gave me that, well, maybe there's a chance that Matt Riddle could win, which is always the key with wrestling. You never want to put on a match where you know that someone's going to lose. Build them up the next, for, for a couple of weeks. Have that be the big match. But unfortunately, no, that is not what we do here for WWE. Not here. Not here on Observer Live. We do it on Observer Live. Uh, you know, think about that, right? I want you guys to think about it. Wrestling Observer Live, Andrew Zarian here. Final segment coming up. I got a couple questions here. I'm going to hit them really quickly. We'll do a rapid fire and we'll be back. Wrestling Observer Live, we'll be right back after this. Wrestling Observer Live, Andrew Zarian here. Final segment of the show. Going into the big New Japan and AEW pay-per-view. Forbidden Door live from Chicago. Excited for this. I'm going to grab a couple brewskis. Put my leg up because I can't really move much, and enjoy the show. It'll be a lot of fun. I got a couple questions here. I thought it'd be fun to answer them. I think we might have answered some of these, but let's do it. Rapid fire questions for the last couple minutes here. Do you think Brian Danielson, who do you think Brian Danielson's replacement will be? I'm going to go with Johnny Gargano, even if I'm wrong. I'm fine with that. A lot of people think Cesaro. Some people think Regal. Matt, our producer here, MG Geek, the one that messes up all the notes, every time, spells everybody. He spelled Brian Danielson's name with a five and a tilde. I have no idea what's going on in my notes here. Uh, he thinks it could maybe be a surprise. I'm going to go with Johnny Gargano only because of the blood and guts connection here. Because he's the king of war games. Uh, do you see this show being an annual event? Uh, it can be. It could be, a, it could be uh, twice a year. I, I, I think they have a lot of opportunity here to do something really cool. Obviously, this show did not become the card that people expected, but a lot of that had to do with injuries, some politics, right? We heard Andrade and Will Ospreay was supposed to have a match, and man, I would love to see that match because I love both of them. Uh, not because I'm the Wish version of Andrade. That's what people say to me a lot. Uh, what other surprises will we see? I don't know. I thought maybe Kenny could show up, but I guess he's not there. Will MJF show up? Maybe that's the surprise here, right? Come and ruin the event. Why only one women's match? Uh, I think a lot of that had to do with the New Japan side not having a women's division and wanting to keep this more also, of a uh, of a thing. We got 10 seconds here. Stardom, Stardom has a show. Stardom has a show, yes. And Stardom has a show here. Guys, so much fun here today. Wrestling Observer Live. We'll be back next week. See you all next time. Take care.